Like, let's say that this woman was a singer and she said, you know what? I want a photo of me by a helicopter with a stormy sky lightning in the background because I have written a song called Lightning Helicopter. And you're like, all right, there you go. Look at that. Oh, perfect. It's exactly what she wanted. Hi, guys. Are you like me? Do you like taking photographs? But when it comes time to edit, especially posting on social media, you drag your feet and you don't actually get much done, even though everyone's always telling you you have to increase your social media profile, Mark. You got to get those pictures up on the old gram. I just don't do it because the robust programs, it takes too much time to do those edits. And then other programs are not quite powerful enough. So I don't enjoy my editing experience. I've always loved the idea of editing on my iPad, especially on the go for things like Instagram, but it just hasn't been right until now. Luminar has come out with a new app for iPad only, and it is really powerful, yet intuitive, easy to use, and most of all, it is fun. It is actually making me do my edits so that I can post to the old Instagram and other types of social media. Look, Instagram, that is all I'm going to do for now, okay? Just YouTube first, then Instagram, and then we will take it from there. Now, this is actually sponsored by Luminar because they reached out to me. They said, Mark, you know everything about everything, right? And I was like, yeah, you're darn right I do. You're darn tootin', Luminar. They said, could you demonstrate our app to the audience, let them know what we offer. And I said, certainly I can do that. They know that I use the Luminar products and they know also I am very smart and a wonderful, a wonderful teacher. And also you don't have to pay for this right now. It is a seven day free trial. You can sign up for the seven day free trial, but it's also extremely affordable if you do decide to buy it. It is $30 for the whole year. So try it for seven days. If you don't like it, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But if it is for you, it's only $30 and I buy them all. I have everything. I have Affinity Pro. I have Lightroom. I have Photoshop. I have everything. And this though, I think is going to be the thing that really helps me with that old social media hurdle that I just simply can't get over. But I will demonstrate all of the features for you. Now, of course, this isn't a review. You can't consider it a review, but more of a demonstration of what the app has. And then I will tell you what I think the app could do to improve at the end of the video, given my honest feedback to Luminar who were kind enough to sponsor this video. So uh, let's get into it right now and show you what it can do. Okay, let's boot up the app here, go into Luminar and just that fast, you will see all of your photos. Of course, you have to allow access to your photos, but then you will see a layout very similar to your photos app. So intuitive, very easy to use. And uh, we have some railway tracks here for me. And uh, these are a couple of shots of a model because I'm a professional, take photos of models. It's actually at Sony Condo. And uh, I don't remember the model's name, but I'm sure she's watching this. Just write a comment below and then we'll all follow your Instagram. I will get to her photos and sky replacement in a little bit. Speaking of models, oh, look at this guy right here in the glasses. Look at those five pictures. That is uh, yours truly, Mark Joseph Bennett, because I'm old now. I can't see close up. So uh, I have to get glasses for my old face. But first, let's go into uh, where is the category that I put up here. I did the Luminar iPad. So I just put these photos here for the demonstration and I am going to go in to this gazebo photo. I took this gazebo photo in Jamaica because I don't just take photos of models. I am also an international world traveler. And I will use this photo to show you the bulk of the editing techniques. So right away, it opens it up in the editing app. But uh, here is the sky replacement. If you look over here on the left, there's the sky replacement you can do. And right here, this film strip is uh, film simulations, you know, so you can just click on one of these presets right here, like this one is Rosa, and then you can move this dial up or down. You want to increase the strength. You can go up to 100 if you want to decrease it. You double click it, it goes back to its default of 50. Now, in truth, this is probably how I'm going to use this app a lot because I want to do really fast edits. So I'll probably pick a preset and then I will do a little bit of editing after that and then get it out there. You know, this is about speed and efficiency and having a bit of fun. That is really what I want with this app to help me with my social media game. But let's turn that off right now so we can edit this raw photo. This is 
a raw photo. Now they don't have raw photo profiles, so you can edit your raw photos, but raw profiles are not supported, but you can still edit the raw photo just fine. And I will show you up at the top here, you have your you know, undo, your redo button. This is the crop tool, and that is going to be obviously very instrumental for someone like me who wants to use this a lot for social media to get different aspect ratios. We'll talk about that. It's really quite good. And uh, here is the eraser tool in case you want to get rid of something in your photo. In fact, let's go in and do that right now. So I will just not pinch to I, to zoom. I will I will flick to zoom, you know, like an iPad app. So very easy to do that. And there are these gentlemen here on this fishing boat. Now, I waited until they got where they were to take this photo because I wanted them in the photo because I am a professional. But let's just say I didn't want them in the photo. Maybe they were giving me the middle finger, something like that. Let's just click on the eraser and then you can just erase over. There goes his fishing pole and then I will erase here. You can change the size of this brush as well, but I think this is actually pretty good for these guys. And then I will let it go. It'll work its magic and we'll think for a second and look at that. It is just gone. Oh my goodness, I love that. Look how easy that is. Okay, so now I will click done on that part right there. And now the men, sorry guys, you are out of this photo. Up top here, we have the information of the photo. Here is where your account will be. And here is the share button if you want to put it up to Instagram or text it to somebody, or you can just save it to your photo reel. Over here, we have the develop tab. And now I am not going to go with this one first because I want to show you the second tab, which is the enhance AI. This is basically an auto slider. So you can just pull that all the way up and it will do what it thinks the photo needs for a little punch. And look at that, it's actually, actually pretty good. I like that, it's a little too much, but I mean, that's pretty good. You talk about one click and then you're done. All right, I'm gonna, I'll, look, see, there it is without it. And there it is with it. Ah, nice. I'm gonna go about, I don't know, 25%. Just, just to help me out so I don't have to do all of the editing myself. Okay, now I will go back to my develop tab. So here we have the temperature slider. And uh, now if you want it nice and sunny or you want it nice and cool, it is up to you. But I am going to reset that and then I'll put it, I'll put up, a little bit. There you go. A nice, nice sunny day. Yeah, we got that. Nice sunny day. Here we have highlights and shadows. The W is whites. The B is black. And here is your exposure. So uh, I think, I think, should I turn up the exposure a little bit? Yeah, I'll turn up the exposure a bit and then I'll lower my blacks a little bit. Let's just lower the blacks. Oh, and look over here. You always get what the thing you're clicking on is in words and digits up over top. Right there, you see blacks now 12. Let's see, if we turn the blacks down, let's see how low we can go. Right here, 75, too much, too much. Let's go back up to about 30. Yeah, okay. And let's put the whites up just a little bit for contrast. See what we have here. Maybe I'll lower that exposure a bit. Maybe it's a little bit too high. Right there, okay, that's pretty good. Now, this squiggly line here is contrast. You will see that once you start dragging on. See, contrast 10, you can go all the way up over there and wait, make it way too contrasty, or you can flatten out that curve and make it nice and flat, you see? So I'm probably gonna put the contrast up to about 10, I think. Yeah, that's good. Now here, we have the vignette. So the vignette is all white over here, and then we can make it yeah, have that big black ring like you put a APS-C lens on a full frame camera. I do like a little vignette, you know, to draw the eye to your subject. So um, let's see, I'll do a vignette about here. Is that good? What do I think? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And now uh, this right here is vibrance and saturation. So you pull it to the right, this cross, and saturation goes up. You pull it up and vibrance goes up. Now, obviously that is a ridiculous look I just did, but just gives you the point. But I do think I want a little bit of vibrance and I do want a tiny bit of saturation. Yes, that is much better. Here we go. Structure, you can move it up or down. I'll just leave that at its default. Now this one right here is relight. This is kind of cool here. So when you click on it, it shows you the brightness far, which is, you know, your distance there. And then your foreground, which is near, is right here. So you know, you can make it darker or you can make it lighter. So I think right there, it looks cool to have the foreground a little bit darker. And let's see, do we want the, no, I, I want the, I want the far to be a bit there. Now I will, I and you can change 
where the light is going with this here. You can you see the sliders moving closer together or further away. So you know what, I will just go, I'll turn, turn this up all the way so you can see it. Now you see how it's bright there on the bottom? So I can move this away from the top. You see that now the brightness is all down here or I can move the brightness back up towards the far. But of course that is too much. In fact, I want a little bit of the brightness taken away from the bottom. So I'm gonna move that down there. Now you can switch it on and off to take a look at what you've done. See that, nice and subtle, but I like what it did. I like that. So I'm gonna leave that on. This tab here is cool, landscape. So this one here is the golden hour. You see, you would turn it way up and make it look like a nice sunny day. Or this one here is foliage. So if you have greens there, grass, trees, you crank that up and you can make those nice and vibrant. So I actually am going to turn the golden hour up just a little bit. Let's see, 30, maybe 30, 29. Yeah, okay. Eh, yeah, there, 34. And now this one is dehaze and fog. So if you turn it up all the way, you're gonna give yourself some fogginess, some foggy look, you'll uh, haze it up. You wanna dehaze it, you turn it down all the way. And look at this. Look at that, that is nice and punchy now. I actually like that, but it's it's too much, but I like it. So I think I'm going to dehaze it just ever so slightly. These are the details. I usually stay away from the small detail going up, but I will medium sometimes. I will add a little bit of the detail there and I will leave the large details alone. And uh, it makes things look a little bit crunchier, a little bit sharper. So the medium going up, not so bad. And uh, this is sharpness, just actual sharpness. Now, let me crank it up all the way and show you. Okay, well, first I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in to this area of the pier so that you can see what it looks like when you crank up the sharpness. So there it is without the sharpness after it loads. And now I'll turn the sharpness on and you can see, look at how crunchy and sharp that got. So it obviously is a very powerful tool. Now, I don't think you should use that much, but I do want a little bit of sharpening in there. And now I'll bring the photo back down to its regular size. This here is the curves. A lot of editors love to edit with curves. They're very powerful and it's great that they are here so people can edit with curves if they want. You can just use the things that I have been using and you never have to touch the curves if you don't want, but it is great to have the option. A lot of people love that S curve, you know, they do like, a, the S curve to make contrast into their photos. But you see, I already have a nice bit of contrast added in, so I don't think I need that. Double click it, resets them, clicks it off. And you can do the same thing with any of the colors. Let's say if I did an S curve for the reds, reset those. You can really change up your image however you like with those curves. And the last tab here is monochrome, so that's black and white, but you can do black and white with cyan, red, yellow, green, magenta, and blue. So it's up to you and I will go back to the colors. But you know, now that I'm looking at that, I feel like there's a little too much green in this. So I'm gonna use one of my color curves and I'm gonna take down that green. You know what? I like that. That looks a lot better with the green taken down. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna go back and reduce the uh, golden hour a little bit. And let's see, what else should I, I think I gotta, yeah, the vibrance is too high. Vibrance is too. I actually like to go back and look at my photos about an hour after I edit them because while you're editing, sometimes you can take it too far. You go back and you take a look at it and switching to black and white also, as you just saw, that helps me visualize it and realize when you've done too much, at least for my taste. But what I can do is I can show you the before and after. You just hold it down with your finger on the uh, photo and you can see there's before and there is after. Look at that, before after. Now I am almost ready to post it on Instagram and make everybody jealous. But let's actually go to the crop tool that was here up top. Once you click on that and it loads, you will see your different features right here. And I like this one as it just lets me resize it. Free form, so size it whatever you want. Square, Instagram or Facebook post, Instagram stories, Facebook cover, of course, I am going for Instagram on this one. Now my little gazebo, I wanna put that in the center of my Instagram photo. So I'll move that over a little bit. And the horizon also looks a tiny bit off. So let me see if I reset it. Yeah, the horizon looks off there. So I will 
make it there. I can use my grid. And now, oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're ready to go. Look at this. And so now I am done. And once that loads up properly, there is my photo ready to share. I will share that to my photo reel or to Instagram. And everybody will know that I have enough money to get on an aeroplane. Now, when you share it to your Photos app, it will go right after the original photo. We'll keep the original photo in its place and right after it will be your new edit. So now let's go back to the model and talk about that sky replacement. And some people don't like sky replacements because they say it is cheating, but sometimes a client is asking you for something that you can't possibly take a photo of. Like let's say that this woman was a singer and she said, you know what? I want a photo of me by a helicopter with a stormy sky lightning in the background because I have written a song called Lightning Helicopter. And you're like, all right, let's do that. It'll only take me a couple of clicks, but you don't tell them that. You tell them that it's a lot of work. And this model was great, by the way. She stood by this uh, helicopter. She just did that on her own. I didn't tell her to do anything. She just grabbed it with her hand. What a professional. Now, when you first click on a sky replacement, it will do some calculations to figure out where the sky is in the photo. So it can take a couple of seconds and then there you go. Look at that. Oh, perfect. It's exactly what she wanted. Lightning with her helicopter. Now we can move the lightning around. We can change the position with this wheel right here. We can also swipe aside to make some minor adjustments. You know, if you want the brightness up or down, or if you want the temperature, you want it to be warmer or cooler, you can do it that way. Or if you want the background blurred out a little bit, if the sky, if you don't want it so in focus, which is probably what I would do for this. I would defocus that background a little bit. Now, of course, you don't have to go with something like this. You could just put in something more realistic, like some clouds in a blue sky behind her and just have it look like this. And there you go. That actually looks that's pretty good. That looks. And so sky replacement can be very useful. And here is a place where it can be extremely useful. Like, for instance, when I was taking photos of that gazebo in Jamaica, I wanted a really nice sunset or a sunrise. I never got it, but I thought to myself, if I ever get it, I'm going to at least take a picture of the sky. So that way, with a gazebo photo, say one day there's a bunch of people, they're in the gazebo, they're ruining your shot, but the sky looks fantastic and you take that photo. And then the next day, there's no one at the gazebo, so you had a clear shot of the gazebo, but the sky looks bland. Then you can replace the sky. So a lot of photographers, they go back to the same spot over and over again. And sometimes you have that perfect light, but you don't have the perfect situation. This way you can replace a sky with just one click and, uh, and it's your own sky. So in my opinion, that is not cheating. If you go back to the same spot and you're just matching your sky with the uh, foreground element that you wanted, I think that is a perfect time to do a sky replacement on your own if you're not doing it for strictly creative purposes. Now, I've been editing this whole thing using my mouse, but that is just so you can see where I'm clicking. Normally, I would just use my fingers or I would use the Apple Pencil. Both work extremely well and it's much more convenient. The uh, mouse is a little bit clunky, but I do it so that you people can see all of the places that I was clicking. So that was just a brief overview. But as you can see, you can do so much with this app. It's very powerful, yet very easy and intuitive. And most importantly for me, it is fun. I have really been dragging my feet on getting a good social media presence besides my YouTube channel, but uh, I just find it too cumbersome to use all of the apps and go in to, you know, my photos and go through everything. Like I have Affinity Pro, I have Lightroom for mobile as well, and I just, I've never gotten into the groove with those things. The free editors are easier to use, but there's not enough in them for me to do a good job in my opinion. So this is just perfect for me, especially for my social media presence. And at $30 a year, you get that seven day free trial. So just try it out if you don't like it. There's uh, no strings attached. You can just cancel it. But I just, like, I buy them all. I told you, I have everything. So I would have this as well. And this is the one that I think is really going to help me get that Instagram up. Now, there are a few things I would like to see added to this app that would make it even better for someone like me. First one I would say is masking. I would like to be able to mask elements of the photo and then not affect the rest of the photo. So say you had a person in the foreground, but they're in shadow. You could mask the person, raise up the shadows without 
without affecting the rest of the image. I'd also like to see, speaking of people, a, a skin softening ability. So, you know, I'd be able to, especially with the masking, I could go in, mask the person, soften the skin. It would be nice if there was some form of skin softening feature or a blemish corrector, something like that for taking a lot of portraits. And I would also like to see layers. So that way you can affect one thing at a time and compound with the layers. That would be great. In terms of being able to transfer the images back and forth to Luminar Neo, to me, that is not paramount. It's not a big deal because I want this as a standalone app. I don't use Lightroom Mobile in conjunction with my Lightroom usually or Affinity Pro on the iPad. Like when I do stuff on the iPad, it's usually for the iPad, for social media or for family, things like that. So I don't care that much about switching, but it would be nice if there was a portal to go back and forth. Now, Luminar does have Luminar Share that does make it a bit easier for you to send files back and forth, or you can just ship them from your photos back to Luminar Neo, something like that. But uh, you know that is a feature certainly that a lot of people would like. And for those wondering, well, I have Luminar Neo, I should get this Luminar iPad for free. They're not really the same thing. They don't communicate with each other really, and uh, they are standalone apps. And if you combine the two, if you buy both, it is still much cheaper than buying a Lightroom subscription, even though Lightroom gives you Lightroom Mobile for free, but the Lightroom cost is so much more than Luminar Neo and this Luminar app combined that you're still going to save a lot of money by going Luminar Neo and Luminar app. But like I've said, I have them all and I use them all in different situations. But this one right here, this Luminar iPad app, this really helps me out when it comes to my social media stuff and my family stuff because I always want to do a little bit of editing but not too much when I'm on the go and I'm traveling or I just want to get something up on Instagram. And now I can finally do that with a little bit of joy in my life instead of the cumbersome process of what I used to try to do. This actually works for me, so I am definitely going to use it for that purpose. And I really appreciate Luminar making this type of app and also hitting me up. They know that I use their stuff, so uh, they asked me to do this tutorial, and of course, I gladly said yes, and if it can help you out, fantastic. Try the trial. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Whatever, float your boat. But I appreciate you watching this right to the end. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.